I did so much over the weekend because we had a little mini heat wave, although it has turned to a complete storm again on Monday, which is today as I'm re-editing this, uh, some of the stuff I did at the weekend. As you can see, nice and hot. This was even in the morning um, and it reached over 80 in here uh, as the day progressed. And I basically did some potatoes. So in this video, what I want to do is um, I'm going to do another video where I just show you everything I did over the weekend. But in this video, I wanted to do some potatoes because I was really behind with my potatoes. Um, as you can see here, it was so balmy. I put the outdoor seating out. And anyway, back to the potatoes. So I was wanting to plant up the first earlies. And what I decided to do was I do have a huge potato planter, but I was running out of time to put that together. I had so much to do that I just decided, you know, better to just get some potatoes planted than none at all. So I decided to use these crates that I've used before for transporting my artwork in the back of my car. And they're literally, I think, a pound. I don't, I actually can't even remember. They were insignificantly cheap. Uh, I decided I was going to use these as my potato stores, but I was also going potato planters, but I'm also going to experiment using just ordinary uh, plant pots. So if you have a balcony or just a small area in your garden where you could maybe dot, maybe you don't have room for big borders, big vegetable borders, a bit like me because I, I prioritise my cottage garden, my flowers, but I do like to grow my own as well. So I'm going to um, also do some in some smaller garden planters. Now specifically for salad potatoes, Obviously, big main crop potatoes are not going to do well in small containers. But first of all, I wanted to just prepare these planters by putting in some ordinary craft paper that I also had from wrapping artwork in the past. Um, I used that to just line the these um, crates. I know I've seen people plant tulips in crates. I have never done that, but it turned out I do have the crates, the same crates that people plant tulips in. Uh, when I first put this, the soil in, I realised it wasn't going to hold the soil uh, well enough without some sort of membrane barrier. And that's when I used the craft paper to minimise, obviously, plastics in your garden and, you know, um, chemicals and things like that. So craft paper, completely um, biodegradable and not that harmful to the environment. And so I filled them up with, it was a mixture of compost garden soil and sharp sand filled it up about eight inches deep then I put the salad potatoes these were charlotte potatoes uh, with the eyes up and I'm going to cover those and if they grow as they start to grow I can raise the level of the soil to the top of the crate um, until they are ready so they're not going to be ready really till um, August so it's a long way to wait and this is also why I've put them right at the back of the garden where I kind of have a dead spot and I've raised them up on a pallet so that the animals can't get into them. So it's effectively like having a raised bed at the bottom of the garden. Uh, I have one more crate to do and then I did some plant pots. So let's have a look at those. All right, so this is a the kind of plant pot you get, you know, like a tree. If you're buying an apple tree from the garden centre, these actually were given to me by the person who supplied my front hedge at the front of the house. And as you know, I had some of that hedging left. So I've uh, also planted that hedge in this back garden here to conceal the horrible fence that I have. Again, and you can see I just measured it there. You can see how deep it is. It's about 10 inches deep and 10 inches across the diameter. Um, and then I used some of my own clay garden soil, compost, my own compost, chop bought compost, sharp, uh, sharp sand, um, just to um, give the, you know, first of all, to bulk it out so that I'm not buying, having to buy a load of compost, but also um, just to provide uh, a huge, a wide range of different nutrients and different mediums so that the potatoes have lots to work with. 
And I picked this pot because it is the sort of pot that most people will just have in their garden from a purchase they've made. It's a pot they probably can get from a family member or friend if you only have a small garden with not much in it. And the point of these pots is, well, one, they're black, so they're going to get nice and warm for the potatoes. But two, they're the sort of things you can just kind of nestle in amongst other plants in your garden. So if you have a flower garden like me, you can just kind of nestle a little pot of potatoes. The foliage will look rather like the foliage of a dahlia. So, and foliage is nice in the border. So you can just kind of nestle your pot anywhere in the garden, tuck it in somewhere in a sunny spot and you're sort of growing potatoes invisibly. So you've got kind of an invisible um, uh, vegetable garden and also if you have a small courtyard garden you could obviously you could obviously put these in a nicer um, pot and uh, so that they're more attractive looking and the obviously the lush greenery that you get with potatoes you could nestle in with some fern well not ferns because ferns would like more shady um, uh, you know back gardens so you're looking at some, some a sunny back garden really a sunny spot it's also the sort of thing you can fit on a balcony. Uh, so that's why I wanted to do it. So I've never done anything in anything this small. I haven't seen anybody do potatoes in a container this small. Uh, but I'm only growing salad potatoes. So I don't want big fat baked potatoes, roast potatoes. These are just going to be for summer salads. And I'm going to put two. So I've filled it up to again about eight inches. So the potatoes have got plenty of soil. And then I'm going to cover it up to the top and I'm even going to do a smaller pot after this one if you have an even smaller space for growing in. And of course, I'm doing this um, to experiment to see exactly what will come, how many potatoes we'll get, what size they are and whether this is a really useful um, size for people with smaller growing spaces such as balconies and, you know, very small back gardens. All right, so this pot is going to get two potatoes and then I'm going to go even smaller with one potato. So again, straight on the top and then cover, just cover with about an inch or two of soil. And then if, if you need to, as the soil settles down, you can fill it up as you go. That's kind of how potatoes work. You can just keep filling, filling the pot up even as the green grows and as you can see there actually there is my green pot which is an ideal it's a rose pot it's from my David Austin roses so it's really really nice and deep for growing potatoes now in this pot I'm only going to put one potato but again as you can see this is quite narrow so you can fit it into any small space as long as it's sunny and remember to keep them watered because uh, obviously potatoes are a very watery tuber and if they don't get plenty of water they won't grow and they get that scab, those scabs on the surface of the skin etc. So we want to keep these really nice and beautiful salad potatoes so we're going to keep them well watered and we're going to keep them in a sunny spot and as I say I'm only going to put one here again about eight on top of eight inches of soil and then cover it over. And then, of course, I will give you the results, which won't really be for another couple of months. I mean, we're talking about the end of July, August, really. And we'll have to just keep our eye on them and see when the leaves start dying back. And then we'll know that they're ready to harvest. And of course, I will bring you up to date so that next year, if you're interested at all and you have a small space, but you still want to grow your own, then you'll be able to do use these methods. So as I say, we usually see gardeners growing in these big tubs, raised beds, or in the soil where they've got big allotments or back gardens. And of course, you know, for me, that's not practical. Even though I have an okay sized garden, I choose to grow prioritized flowers, but I also do want to grow my own. So I'm trying to knit growing my own in and around the flowers so we'll see how i get on anyway if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and uh, like and visit my website at jillbretherton.com and i've got so much more to come i it just aren't enough hours in the day <laughs> for the stuff i want to bring you so please do stay with me and um, i'll bring it to you as soon as i can thank you for watching bye